Okay, today we're looking at 12.1, which is homeostasis in action, with specific reference to controlling body temperature. Now, controlling our body temperature has meant that we have been able to live and exploit lots of different environments around the Earth, so that we can take food from these places and we can survive. So if you think about things, we can live in really cold climates, we can live in really hot climates, but all the time we maintain our temperature at 37 degrees C. So how do we maintain our body temperature? Well, there are a couple of things. As your blood temperature decreases and your blood passes through the brain, the hypothalamus is where your thermoregulatory center is located. So as the blood passes through the hypothalamus, it notices if blood temperature is a little bit too high or if blood temperature is a little bit too low. Also, this area receives information from your skin. Your skin sends it information about the ambient temperature of the environment and they feed back there. So what does the thermoregulatory center then do once it notices that the blood temperature is not at the ideal. So you only have to think about your PE class when you think about the changes that happen to you during exercise when you get too hot. Um, so in this case, we're not talking about perhaps ambient temperature, we're just talking about your body temperature because of respiration and the increase in muscle contraction, you have created a lot more heat energy in your body. And you've got to get rid of that because obviously your enzymes work at their optimum at 37 degrees. So think about it, your face goes red and that is because of what we call vasodilation. And what's happened there is the blood flow to your skin is increased. And the reason why is because the blood vessels that supply your capillaries get a little bit um, dilated and that lets more blood flow through the capillaries that serve the skin. So the capillaries don't change in size because they can't, they're only one cell thick, but the blood vessels that serve them, the arterioles do, that increases in volume and more blood flow is lot more blood, more heat is lost from the blood through convection and radiation into the environment. The other thing that you'll notice when you come from PE is that you sweat and the water on your head, really it shouldn't be wiped away because as that water, as that sweat evaporates, again, it takes heat energy from your body with it. And you'll notice if you get something like um, nail varnish remover or ethanol in, and put it on your skin, you'll notice it feels cold. And it's not cold, it's not any colder, it's not been in the fridge, it's just that its evaporation is much quicker than that of water and therefore, it takes the heat from your hand as it evaporates off. So let's think about the other extreme. How do we conserve heat when we move into a cold environment? Well, one of the things that, that will happen is that instead of dilating your blood vessels that supply your capillaries will constrict. And that reduces the blood flow to your skin. So that reduces the amount of heat lost by, again, convection and radiation. And when this is taken to extremes, for example, people who go um, up Everest on expedition and they can suffer frostbite because maybe their ears or their nose that isn't protected and the vasoconstriction is so prolonged that the cells around there don't get enough oxygen and enough glucose and they begin to die. And you'll see people with bits of their ears removed or chunks of their nose or their toes or their fingers, their extremities are at risk. Also, what happens when you get really cold is your body starts to shiver. And shivering is an, an involuntary reaction. You can't start proper shivering. You're, it's spasmodic uh, muscle contractions because every time you contract your muscle, you respire more and more heat is lost as a waste product. So we've got a couple of things going on. In order to retain um, heat when we're cold, we vasoconstrict our blood vessels, less blood flow goes to the skin, um, and then the other thing that we do is shiver. And then also, when we are too hot, we vasodilate, and the consequence of that is that the blood vessels that serve the capillaries allow more blood to flow through them. Um, and then the other thing here is we sweat, and as the sweat, the water in the sweat, 
evaporates from a liquid to a gas that takes energy. It takes the heat energy from your body, so your body temperature is lowered around the ideal of 37 degrees. Experiment, we're just modeling how the body behaves and um, to, uh, to control one of my variables, I've put the same volume of water in each of these beakers and I'm modeling these different mechanisms. So for instance, this one is wrapped in a paper towel and the paper towel is damp. That models sweating. This one, I've wrapped it in foil and I've given it fins. I've increased the surface area there. In this one, this is my control. This is what I'm gonna compare it to. And this one, I have a layer of oil on the top and that represents the fat under our skin. You'll notice when you do PE that people who have a little bit more fat under their skin are the ones who end up a little bit redder in the face. So I've put hot water in each of these. The hot water is gonna be the same temperature in each of them. And then what I'm gonna do is every minute, I'm going to monitor their temperature over a period of about 10 minutes. That's gonna give me four sets of results and I'm going to plot them as cooling curves on a graph.